Welcome to the Monday, June the 3rd, 2024 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. We'll let members and staff introduce themselves. Benjamin Cheney, member. Eric Gilbertson, member. William Russell, member. Stephen Everett, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. And we will let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. I think everybody who is, I think Jeff has done this before remotely. So um, most of this is going to be for people who might be watching via Orca Media. Uh, all right. Hold on. I may have to pop up again to make sure that links show. We'll see. Um Yep, I'll be right back. Okay, so for anyone viewing tonight's Design Review Committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the discussion via the Zoom platform using either the video or telephone access options. If you want the full video experience, please type this link into your web browser um, and I'll get a message that you wanna join the meeting and let you in. Alternatively, you can dial in on any phone using this phone number, and when prompted, put in this meeting ID. Um, and again, I'll get a prompt to let you into the meeting. If anyone is trying to access the meeting and having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Um, and um, please note that if you get on remotely, we ask you to please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, if somebody does call in via phone, you can use star six to mute or unmute yourself. Um, please remember that the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, and if anyone gets on and has a question or comment about an item on the agenda, um, please raise your hand either physically or by using the button on your toolbar. Um, and then once you get called on, you'll need to state your name um, and your address, and then you can go into your comments. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, and I would find that out via my email, the meeting will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. At this point, do we hear a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. This is Martha. I hear a second. 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 We are. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Stephen. Ben. William. The agenda is approved. We can go forward to the first applicant for 4759 Berlin Street, owners John and Maria Quadros. Are you here for? Okay. Okay. So, so is. Come forward and sit at the chairs at the table, if you would. And we also have uh, Jeff Aleski online, if you and want him to do any presentation. Introduce yourself. So I'm DeMartin Quadros. We run the Duncan there in Montpelier. Okay. And I'm Susan Quadros Covey. Um, do you guys want me to turn off the AC? Is it so loud? You're good? I think okay. We're okay. You are? Okay. Can you turn it down? Does it have a yes. quiet mode or economy mode? See, let me take a peek. I just, I noticed that it was a little loud Okay, go ahead and describe your application for us. So we are proposing to um, merge uh, the two lots um, and um, move our entrance, the e ingress and egress 
uh, further down on the adjoining property. Um, also reconfiguring the parking lot that's there. Um, maybe is there anything else that Jeff might want to add? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, for the record, my name is Jeff Oleski with Catamount Consulting Engineers. Uh, I'm a civil engineer uh, for the project. And um, yeah, I think DeMartin, DeMartin uh, kind of summed it up pretty quickly. Um, it's essentially we've got two lots that we recently merged administratively uh, with an application with Meredith. Um, so DeMartin and, and his family own the existing Dunkin' Donuts property. Of, I think it's 47 to 51 Berlin Street. And they are in the process of purchasing a lot to the south, which I think is uh, maybe 55 to 59 Berlin Street, which is the uh, auto repair shop owned by the Caribous. Um, and so uh, ultimately that that property has come up for sale and, and they're interested in purchasing it um, with the intent of raising and removing that existing auto repair shop to the south, um, removing a lot of the infrastructure and, and um, existing parking area on that property, and then ultimately uh, consolidating the three curb cuts. Right now, there's an, one existing curb cut on the Dunkin' Donuts property that has uh, an egress uh, and ingress uh, with a median, kind of a, a brick median in the middle. And then there's kind of what, you can either call it one very large curb cut on the auto repair facility, or it's kind of broken up with two separate ins and outs, but there's a concrete pad in the middle, I think was probably a gas station dispensary, maybe back in the day or something, I'm not exactly sure, but um anyway the you know obviously uh anybody familiar with this area um you know dunkin donuts obviously has a drive-through component to it and there's uh, quite a bit of business that occurs there in, in the mornings and the afternoons and uh the queuing for that drive-through obviously um can get pretty long and sometimes even back up into berlin street um and create some unsafe uh situations and, and hazards for both vehicles as well as pedestrians uh using the sidewalk that runs along the entire frontage of these two properties um, and so uh, what we're looking to do with the purchase of the property of the South is consolidate those three curb cuts or two curb cuts down to one, move it as far South as we really can uh, with an attempt to A, consolidate the number of curb cuts so there's less uh, options and going in and out of these, these two properties. Uh, but then the, the, really the main benefit is creating a lot more queuing space uh, for vehicles on property so that we can remove those out of the right of way and roadway and create some safer conditions for everybody. Um, so what we what you see in front of you is essentially a proposed plan. Uh, the existing building uh, and signage would all be retained uh, pretty much as is, um, as with the majority of the existing Dunkin' Donuts site with the exception of that curb cut out front. Um, and then again, we would remove the building uh, on the lot to the south uh, remove all that, uh, a lot of that gravel and, and concrete and pads and whatnot, and create a, uh, a paved entrance in and out. Uh, there'd be one in, uh, access in, and then actually two lanes now out to separate that traffic a little bit um, and provide some more queuing space along the frontage of the property here. But then reconfigure the parking to provide some uh, re redistributed parking. I'll say, for lack of a better term, I believe we. We are requesting maybe the maximum proposed parking we can have for this type of facility, but I, I think it's kind of warranted given the use there. Um, and then at the same time, doing some other minor site improvements, uh, including uh, relocating and, and creating a nice new dumpster and recycling trash enclosure that'd be fenced in um, and some new exterior lighting uh, to create some, uh, you know, just a base security level lighting around the new parking areas. And at the same time, some new landscaping along the street frontage to kind of break up this new parking area. So um, that's kind of the project in a nutshell. There's no utility in the changes really, uh, other than the removal of the municipal water and sewer to that existing auto repair building, um, and no changes really to the building or the aesthetic of any of that. So um, I hope that's an adequate summary, but I'm, I'm happy to turn it over to the, the board or, or committee for any questions they may have. Or to Martin, if you have anything you'd like to add, feel free to. That's good. So at this point that the whole building where the auto repair place, that's all paved, correct? That whole lot? It's, it's, not, paved. it's not paved? It's, it's gravel. It's gravel. Partial gravel. I'm not actually not sure. Maybe yeah, just. it's actually it's actually a combination of pavement, lots of very large concrete pads and gravel. Um, if Meredith wanted to bring up the existing condition site plan, we did do a full topographic survey of both of these properties. 
on anticipation of reworking this. So I, I could very quickly go over the existing and proposed conditions if anybody would like some detail as to what the reconfiguration looks like if that site plan is hard for anybody to read. Yep, I can pull it up. Give me just a second. We're assuming there are no more tanks <laughs> underground. No, there. There, there hasn't been <laughs> tanks since. I don't, no no I, surprises underground. No, no. Yeah, I think that's all been remediated and uh, removed back yeah. in when that was decommissioned as an auto gas station, I think, back in the day, if I understand it correctly, to Brian. Yeah. Yep, late 90s. Curvo had, all, had the tanks removed and all that. Can you all anticipate right. paving this whole area yep. to make more parts? All right, so I'm going to do a share screen. So everybody here is going to pop up on the big screen. And I'll try and stick with what Jeff's discussing. Um, so this is, you want me to show the existing, Jeff? Yeah, you can start there. So there is an existing chain link fence that separates the two properties. Um, that kind of, yeah, there you go, Meredith, that runs there. And so we'd be removing that fence. Pretty much everything to the south of that is, is a gravel parking lot right now up right up to the toe of the slope in the back and then right up to the building. And then you can kind of see, we've labeled a couple concrete pads with some hatching there. That That's a service entrance for the auto repair shop. And the one near the circling there, I think was probably the old gas station um, pump location. And then between that concrete pad and the building is all paved right now. Um, so really everything on that, on that site gets essentially removed. Uh, and then we re rebuild it and supplement it with some new sub-base conditions and then ultimately pave it uh, as Meredith brings us to the proposed site plan. And so everything in that light gray shaded area would be paved. The darker shaded area there is the new concrete pad for the trash and recycling enclosure. Um, just because right now it's tucked in the back left corner of the Dunkin' Donuts site and it's kind of unaccessible or difficult to get to. So um, we're relocating it where there'd be a little bit better access for uh, you know, the waste and recycling removal companies to get access to it. Um, I will point out that although that is a, we were paving all of that um, between the portions of the building that we're removing, that we're reclaiming, as well as installing that uh, a grass median with some landscaping along the frontage, uh, we are actually do have a net reduction in the total impervious area out there. Uh, both of these sites currently just uh, sheet flow drain out into the Berlin Street right away and get collected in a series of catch basins that are uh, shown on the plan. And, and ultimately, the grading plan here wouldn't change that any. Um, there, it'd be tweaked a little bit to make sure we're getting the water out of the, the uh, revised locations as far as the, the um, access is concerned. But the general concept would still be for both of these uh, you know, lots to sheet float out onto uh, Berlin Street and, and be collected the same way. And, and again, because this is more or less a redevelopment project and we're reducing the amount of impervious out there, you know, I, I think it's our uh, our interpretation or professional opinion that, you know, no real stormwater treatment is necessary because we're essentially improving uh, an, an existing condition. Assuming the public works has looked at this and has approved, yep. I mean, they don't have any issues with anything. So, so far, I haven't heard any issues from them. They've seen this, and yep. I'll be that's part of the because this is um, going to have further review um, because they're asking for a waiver. It needs to go to the development review board. So, I'll, I'm still collecting the rest yep. of the departmental comments. Um, but, yeah. I see the five new trees you're planting, but I'm curious what the hashed mark near the uh, where the existing entrance to Dunkin' Donuts is being removed. What what's being indicated by that hashed mark there? So so what yeah what Meredith's uh, highlighting there is the additional area to be reclaimed. That's the existing curb cut to Dunkin' Donuts that we're going to yeah. be pulling that pavement and island out. Um, if we're referring to the darker hatched area just to the left of that. Um, that's an area that we're actually proposing to serve as kind of a loading uh, area in this parking lot. Um, one thing that's also a challenging site uh, uh, for or condition of this site is, is anybody who's been out there maybe when deliveries are taking place um, is that because this neither of these lots actually are very deep, 
Um, and Dunkin' Donuts does receive uh, deliveries, obviously, uh, on a, a larger tractor trailer. Um, there isn't a great space or location for loading and unloading. And it's actually, I think, Meredith, correct me if I'm wrong, the main reason we were having to go to the development review board is because we're proposing a loading area in the front of the building um, uh, that, generally speaking, the city prefers to have in the rear. Unfortunately, given the existing site conditions here and the, the tight turning radii around the back of this building, there's really no way to functionally get uh, a loading area in the back of this building that would serve the needs of the site. So uh, what we're proposing is, is, is hatching off an area of pavement in the front here um, that's, that's paved now, um, but that can serve as a place for these trucks to pull into and do their loading and unloading without really negatively impacting the flow of traffic um, and or pedestrian access, and then still being able to get in and out of the site. So th that's the purpose of that, if that answers your question. It does, thank you. Yeah, how, how do you get out of this, the site once, you're, once you pull in? I assume you're pulling in the, the, the entrance, making it, making it turn and pulling in you know, forward into that that spot are these trucks big enough or i guess i should ask what size trucks they are yeah and that would depend a little bit on the on the size of the truck that's doing the delivery so there's a couple options um and and acknowledge that none of them are perfect or ideal but we are also dealing i'll just highlight again that we're dealing with a scenario now where i i believe tractor trailers just kind of pull onto the site and then have to back out onto route two which um obviously is less than ideal so the way we envision this happening is is trucks that can't well ideally they would pull into this site pull into that loading area back into the south side of the dunkin donuts building and kind of do a three-point turn and then exit out um if that's not an option and depending on the time of the delivery or whatnot the the larger trucks potentially could back into the site into that loading area and then just pull out and, and we it's another reason why we've made an extra wide curb cut here that we're looking to retain um what we're proposing essentially is like yes, your standard uh, 30 foot wide commercial grade access um, so that even though we don't have a lot of depth here for trucks to pull in, in a, and just do a three point turn in a traditional sense that they've got that additional width there to get in and out of the site um, you know, as, as necessary. Um, there still may be some incidences where there's uh, you know, it, it, causes some conflicts or, or backup, but it's certainly, it's our opinion, it'd, it'd be a lot better than it functions right now. What trees are you planting? Uh, I believe we're proposing uh, like autumn blaze maple. Um, and I think they're along the frontage there in that median, I think we're proposing them to be about 20 feet apart or so. Um, with the intent being that, you know, they're a nice, larger, mature tree, but they generally have kind of, uh, don't have a lot of uh, branches on the lower levels. And so that we're not really impacting sight lines necessarily as these trees mature. Um, and, and just, again, to create that visual break between the parking lot and, and Berlin Street. And so there'd be three on the north side of the new entrance, one on the south side, and then just kind of a, a matching tree on the south corner. Yeah, right there, Meredith. Thank you. Um, just to kind of create some harmonious vegetation around that. Um, also keep in mind that the bank to the southwest of this new parking lot is all kind of a vegetated uh, bank right now that's stable. Um, so that that's a kind of a landscape buffer to the uh, existing residential houses that are off of Prospect Street to the southwest. <laughs> Meredith, you're very good at uh, following my train of thought. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I I look at the plans a lot usually before the <laughs> meeting. So does anyone have any further questions, comments, suggestions? The, the new lighting that you anticipate, is that the same lighting that you have now? Yeah, I, I think oh go ahead, Martin. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's similar to what we did at our Berlin location. I think it's actually, uh, again, Jeff can probably speak better to what we're putting in. Yeah, they're they're you know um, LED uh, energy efficient downcasting, fully shielded light fixtures that I believe are in uh, produce a lumen level that's consistent with the requirements of the of the lighting specifications in the city of Montpelier, and and uh, so we're proposing 
uh, two new light poles, one centrally centered on the two new parking areas on the south parking lot, one in the, the four to the south and one on the six to the west. And then there's uh, uh, we're proposing that third one to be relocated or, or moved or new to that's just to the left of the trash dumpster enclosure. Uh, that that one stays actually, Meredith. Oh, right, uh, that yeah, one. right there. There you go. Yeah. Um, and that one's mainly um, for that 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 cross hatch area is representative of be a pedestrian means and methods to get from the Dunkin' Donuts to the parking areas to the south, as well as serve as the accessibility to the ADA compliant parking space we have right there. Can you point to the locations of your uh, chain link fences? And I assume by colored, your the Dunkin' Donuts color scheme is what is going in them? Yeah, it would just be around the perimeter right there as Meredith is highlighting that. That's the only new fence that there is an existing chain link fence that runs along the property line between these two properties that will be removed as part of this project, obviously. So that would be the only new fence there. Any any idea where the when the Caribou building was built? I personally don't have a uh, great idea. It might be on the list just card. I might be able to pull that up while we're talking here. I know we have that. Property card. Uh, 1954 is what it currently says. Yeah. I, I mean, I, that that's just coming from the uh, unofficial property record card from the city of Montpelier. Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a, definitely not the most attractive looking building at this point. It's definitely showing its age a little bit. There'll be a... Um, Welcome removal from the community. Any other questions, comments? If not, I can read through the criteria. We have a criteria sheet for all projects. And the criteria well, that... I just wanted to mention that at first, when I was looking at, at this, I thought that the trees would be inconsistent with the, with the context. But then I saw that there are some in, at Cumberland Farms. I mean, I think it's an... You know, I think everyone would agree it's an improvement, but it's just, it's just kind of interesting that if we're looking at compatibility with the context, it's the trees are, are an improvement, but out of care. <laughs> and I also think that the, in this being a busy street, that the parking situation that you have for the deliveries looks entirely reasonable. Um, you know, it's a lot better than what, um, you know, the hardware store has. Um, you know, it's, it's just it's challenging with older <laughs> yes. with older towns. So, and this is going to be a huge improvement. I know it's like people. It really currently it backs up traffic and be, makes it an unsafe environment. So, this will be helpful to have more on site queuing and parking. Okay, going through the criteria on for all projects number two existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time place and use and this application that's acceptable proposed landscaping shall be compatible with the neighborhood and the site on which the project is located acceptable location and appearance of all utilities mechanical equipment trash storage and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact were adequately and appropriately screened from public view, acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixtures. The structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood. The proposed lighting seems acceptable. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the design review overlay district and subject to the landscaping requirements shall consider the following. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, and other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. And does the landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements of any historic buildings? And mechanical equipment screening. And that's acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. 
This is Martha. I say yes. William, I say yes. Steve says yes. Great. I'm, I have no grounds to say no, so I'm going to abstain because I would prefer to see a building uh, that could be used for something else instead of a parking lot stay there. But I have no grounds to say no, so I'm going to abstain. Okay. Eric? Eric, your vote, you got to unmute yourself. Oh, you're still muted, Eric. You want to give a thumbs up? Yeah. There you go. No. Uh, yes, I, I'm going to abstain too, based on the reuse of the building. Okay, with two abstaining and not objecting, that means we are three in favor. Yep. Which is an approval. And I'm going to have one of you come up. There's a spot for you to sign on the bottom of the criteria sheet here. Just right below my name, right there. So it's approved. Good luck with your project. All right. Thank you for coming. So, so this form will get folded into the application package. Um, and I'll see you in two weeks at development review board. Okay. Um, and before that one, the week before that meeting, you'll get a full staff report with the full zoning analysis laid out in it. Okay. Um, Great. Thank, you. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. Thanks everyone for your time. Have a good night. You too. And if everyone's had a chance to take a look at the minutes from the May the 6th meeting. Steve, you were here that day, right? I wasn't here. No. Oh, Rebecca, you can vote on this. <laughs> <laughs> if if Steve abstains, then you can vote. Steve can't vote. I can't yeah, vote. Well, he could. Yes. We've had some people, when we need I, it, we've I had people do it. Abstain <laughs> since I wasn't here. Well, I'll make a motion to accept them the way they're written. I'll second. All in favor of approving the minutes, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Ben. William. Rebecca. So minutes are approved. Does anyone have anything else to add at this point? If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moves, says Eric. All second. All in favor, speak your names. Martha. William. Eric. Stephen. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming.